Okay. Okay. Are you recording? Okay. Cool. Make sure you like and subscribe. All right. First one is X is Y to zero power. Anything is zero power. Anything is zero power is one. Okay. That one's easy. Yay. Next one's easy too. X plus Y to the first is X plus Y. Next one should be something that you've done a bit before. You might have to write it out and then FOIL if you've forgotten, you know, what this answer is. But I've done it so many times that I have it memorized. Okay, and notice the order that I chose to write it in on purpose, where my first term, x, the x squared is first. Then we go down to 1x and we go down to no x's, just because the x came first, I wrote in that order. All right, how do we find x plus y to the third? So we already did square, right? We already did. So how do I find the third? And I'm going to take the square and multiply it by one more. So please stop. If you haven't done this, let's go over how we do this by hand so you can greatly appreciate the shortcuts you're going to learn today. I get x, I'm going to multiply x by everything and to distribute that x squared. And then I like to do it in different colors so I can separate my terms and see them. Um, then I'll have x squared y. Two x y squared plus y to the third, and then I add up all my like terms, and then I conveniently put them on top of each other. So I get x cubed plus three x squared y plus three x y squared plus y to the third. And how would we find the fourth power? You just pass. <laughs> we pass. You would take the third power and you multiply it by another x plus y. And you have to distribute all your x's, distribute all your y's, combine your like terms. I will put the answer up there because of time. You will notice that every single time we multiply by a higher, higher power, higher power, <laughs> certain things are happening. First thing I want you to notice is the number of terms. So the power compared to the number of terms. If I have zero power, I have one term. If I have one power, I have two terms. If I have two power, three terms. Power of three, how many terms? Power of 10, so many turns. So there's always um, one more term than the power number. Because we're going to be doing this stuff without actually multiplying it all out. We're going to be doing it with a shortcut. We're going to be using um, some of the already said Pascal's triangle. And then we're going to take that, we're going to use something called the binomial theorem. Okay, so we have this. Uh, let's write Pascal's triangle, and I would write it small, and I'd start in the middle. Pascal's triangle is just the coefficients of each power, so we start at the zero power. Why? Okay, so this is through the fourth power, which we just did. And using this pattern, you will notice that Every time that um, there's another row to get that next row, you take the two numbers above it and you add it together. So like to get this one on the very outside, I'm adding an imaginary zero that's not really there, but it's zero because it's not there because it's zero. Okay. So I'm adding zero plus one and I get one. To get that three, I'm adding one and two and I get three. To get this um, four, I'm adding three and one and I get the four. So using that, we can do as many rows as we want. The next one would be one, and then what? Five, 10, 10, five, one. The next row would be one, what? 
big. 15, 20, 15, thick, one. And you can put as many rows as you want, and you can also make this anytime you want, because it's just adding the two numbers above it. So these are the coefficients. And remember, which tower is the first one? That's the zero power. The next one is the first power. The next one is the second power. Remember, there's three terms or three coefficients compared to two to the power. If there's always one more um, coefficient than there is power. Okay? So that's Pascal's triangle, and we use that, and we also use what we learned about um, just the pattern about the uh, x's and y's to uh, just write this without having to multiply it all out. So we're going to write x plus y to the fifth without multiplying it all out. So x plus y to the fifth, when you look at your chart, well, there's one more thing I'm going to say. Like the second power, that's that first number. The third power, that's that first number. That's not a one, sorry. First number, that's not a one. The fourth power starts with one, four. So for the next example, it's asking me to use the fifth power. I know which row to use immediately because it starts with one, five. So if I don't have all that written down, I know it's the fifth power that starts with one, five. This is the power. So here we're going to write x plus five, or x plus y to the fifth. First of all, I need my coefficient. So across that row, there's six terms. What are the six coefficients? One, five, ten, ten, five, one. Then what are the variables doing? And you can see the examples from above. What are the x's doing from start to finish? They start with how many? If you look at the this this example here, look, x plus y to the fourth starts with x to the fourth. So what am I going to start with when I do the fifth? I'm going to have x to the fifth. Then what happens each time to the x's? They're going down by one. They're decreasing. So this will be x to the fourth. This will be x to the third. x to the second. x to the first. And then no x's. And we look at the pattern with the y's, what's happening with the y's. You know, I, you can say that they do this way, but I, I personally always start here and increase that way. So it starts with no y. Then it starts with one y. Then we've got y squared. Then we've got y to the third. Then we've got y to the fourth. And finally, y to the fifth. And we've expanded it out without actually having to multiply into my molecular terms. Yeah, sure. okay. So the patterns with the exponents, there's a couple things that you notice is the first term, the exponents are decreasing. Whatever is in the first spot, which currently is an x, but it won't always be an x. So the exponents are decreasing all the way down to zero. And then the second term, the exponents are increasing, starting at none, starting at zero, but they're increasing. There's something else that you want to know about the exponent, um, using this example particularly. How many variables are in the first term? How many variables in the second term? If there's five here, there's not two here. Five. How many variables in this term? Five. How many variables in this term? Five. Five. And five. So if you sum up the variables, it's five in each term. I know what you meant, but then you would have told me one here. So there's always going to be the exponent times the exponent. There's always going to be that variable. Um, if, there's, if there's variables in both spots. There's not always variables in both spots. Just a pattern. But the x's will always go down. The y's will always go up or whatever is in this spot. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're going to put more in those spots besides x and y. So let's go on the next page. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the spot as parenthesis 2x, parenthesis negative 3, and then I'm also paying attention to my power. So my power is 4. That tells me how many terms. Five terms. 
that tells me when I use Pascal's triangle, I'm going to start with the coefficients of 1, then 4. So I'm looking for that row that has 1, then 4. What's the rest of them? On Pascal's triangle on the front page. 1, then 4, then 6, 4, and 1. 6, 4, 1. Now, I'm color coding this if you're following along and you like colors. That's what I'm doing. So now I'm going to take my 2x. And that's going to be like my x term, but this time it's 2x. So in the first term, I put 2x, and I put it to the what power? 4, Four the highest one there. The next term is going to be 2x to the third. The next one's going to be 2x to the second. Then we've got 2x to the first. Now we have no 2x's. So we're going down, we're decreasing. I'm going to do the same thing with my negative 3, only I'm going up. So I'm going to start with 0, negative 3. Then negative 3 to the first, negative 3 to the second, negative 3 to the third, and then negative 3 to the fourth. And those become my five terms. And then you just have to simplify each term. So the first term I'm going to do 2x to the fourth. Remember when you have parentheses, you have to take the entire 2 and the x to the fourth. So I'm going to get 16x to the fourth. That's my first term. My second term, I'm going to kind of multiply in between. I'm going to have a 4. I have to multiply that by 8x to the third and multiply that by negative 3. So I have a negative. And then I've already done this. Speed it along a little bit. Negative 96 times x to the third. Next one, 6 times. 4x squared, and then negative 3 squared is 9. I'll apply all that together. We get 216x squared. And I'll have 4 times 2x times negative 27. Multiply all that together. We get negative 216x. And then my last term, negative, four, or negative 3 to the fourth is positive 81. That's the first thing that I notice is that it's to the third power, so that tells me four terms. Then I go and I look at my coefficients on my Pascal's triangle. I look for the one that starts with 1, 3, and it finishes with 3, 1. Then x squared is the first parenthesis, so I have to take that to the third and to the second. Then to the first, and then to the none. And then the 2y is the second one, and there aren't any in the first term. So we have 2y to the first, 2y to the second, and 2y to the third. And you just have to make sure you multiply all this correctly. Remember when you take a power to a power with like variables and exponents? Just multiply the exponents x to the six. When you look at the um, expanded out polynomial, you'll see that the x's are going down, but they're going at twos because they started at the power of two. And the y's are going up by one because they started at power one. Do we have questions on this one? Okay, so in the last two minutes, I'm going to show you part of a video. So our next example would be what what would happen if you if you needed to expand x plus three to eight? Yeah. So we have shortcuts. We got shortcuts. That's what we're about to learn about right now. Um, so I'm gonna skip that. Come back to that in a second. But to do these shortcuts, you have to understand how to do a combination. 
So you may or may not have learned about combinations in a previous course, but it, it does have to do with probability. The top number, which we call n, is how many things are available. The bottom number, which we have labeled r, is how many you are choosing. So this combination, would we would say n choose r. You could see it written up and down with the parentheses and, and not a line, not a fraction. Or you might see it with a big C with an N and an R at the bottom. And there's a formula that we can use to expand this, and it's using factorials. So on top you do N factorial, on the bottom you do R factorial multiplied by N minus R factorial. Are you okay? Something happening out there. Oh yeah, because there's because of the wind. It was such a nice. Okay, so if we are doing n choose r, 3 choose 0, you would do 3 factorial over 0 factorial multiplied by 3 minus 0 factorial. So I'm using this formula right here. Is this on? Oh, I'm sorry. It, it's not written there. We've got plenty of room to chop some examples down. This is the wrong one. Because I wanted you to see what happens when we do 3 factorial over 0 factorial multiplied by 3 minus 0 factorial. So 0 factorial is 1. 3 minus 0 factorial, when we do that, we use the order of operation. You do what's inside the parentheses first. That was on the quiz. Not exactly, but something like that was on the quiz, and a lot of people did it wrong. So you do 3 minus 0 first, and whatever that answer is, you do the factorial of. So on the bottom, I have 3 factorial. And what's 3 factorial divided by 3 factorial? Yes, it's one. Yeah, 1. So this, what does the answer tell us? <coughs> you getting there. <laughs> Not there yet. <coughs> Trying to get rid of these extra marks that my... thing always flips there and I don't know why. Alright, the next one we would do 3 factorial over 1 factorial multiplied by 3 minus 1 factorial. So you would have 3 factorial over 1 factorial is 1, 3 minus 1 is 2 factorial. Remember we expand out the factorial and you're just taking the numbers. Um, if you don't have to write down this next step if you know factorials, but some of you did not know factorials from that quiz. And when we expand out, we, we just subtract 1 each time. We multiply those numbers together, those would cancel, what do we get? Three. Now if I do three choose two, I'd have three factorial over two factorial multiplied by three minus two factorial. So I would get three factorial over two factorial. Because three minus two is one, and that would be one. Now what do I get if I have three factorial over two factorial? I would get three. Then the last one I would have um, three factorial over three factorial multiplied by yeah three minus three factorial. So that part would be zero factorial, which is one. So I have three factorial over three factorial. I have one. It's weird. I keep writing them fractions. Right over two. Yeah, don't put a line in between. I mean, the formula has a line, but not the fact, not the combination part. Yes, for you. Is zero factorial like one? one. Yep. So you'll see my answers when it is three for the top number is the exact same answers in the um, Pascal's triangle for the third power. It's one, three, three, one. So to get anything on Pascal's triangle, you can actually use this combination. As long as you know what you want, you can use this combination. The top would be the power, and then the bottom is always 0 through what the power is. To get anything in Pascal's triangle, this will line up. You can also do combinations on your calculator. Do you have calculator? That's on the next page. So there's two different ways, and it just depends on if you have old calculator or new ones. New ones, you have to go uh, to math, PRB, number three, type in the stuff that you need. But it's going to look like 
um, the form that has a C, where the first number is the N and the second number is the R. It's going to look like that form and won't look like the um, 8 over the 2. If you have the older calculators, you just have to type in the 8 first, then go math PRB number 3, and then type in 2. You should get 28. Go ahead and try it. You should get 28. I'm going to turn the light back on. No, no, no. Can we take them over to this? Yes, because you have the type of data. I didn't know if you could see your calculator screen. Yeah, I can see it. I used to order it again. Good. Here's Matt getting 28. Uh, so I can help you. Yes. Oh, so you have a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a so they're permutations or combinations, which there's, uh, they're different, but I'm not going to get into a problem with lesson right now. Okay, if you have it on your calculator, what's nice is we're going to maybe use this, um, let me get it on here. We're going to use this for different, there you go, any time today. Oh, I can't handle the dark. I can't do it. There we go. <laughs> We're going to use this um, a bunch of times today. You can just, anytime you want to get back to it, instead of going like math, PRB3 or whatever, you can just, if you just hit second enter, go ahead and hit second enter. And then you just go change the numbers to whatever you want. Second enter, change the numbers to whatever you want. And while we do this, we'll never change the top number. We'll never change the first number. So it'll go really fast for you to find every single answer. You just change that second number every time. If I, I just put in like 8 MTR 6 and it's still being 28, why did you do that? Even though it's on the top right. Oh, because in the row, remember like the first and the last numbers match and then like they kind of match going out and it's into the second. So you just pick two that match. If you put in a, choose a different one, it shouldn't match. Okay, I'm going to finish these notes up. So this is the binomial theorem, and it looks really, really scary, but we've talked about every single thing here already. To expand out a binomial without having to use Pascal's triangle to save yourself some time, what you're going to do is you're going to find the coefficient by using combinations. The top number is the power. The bottom number goes from 0 all the way to whatever the power is. Just add one each time. The, whatever's in the first spot, like they have an A here, so you'll see A is now to the nth power, then it's to the n minus 1, then it's to the n minus 2, so you're subtracting each power, stuff we've already talked about. And then the B starts with 0, then it goes to first power, then it goes to second power, and we're adding all the way until we get to the nth power. So it's explaining just all the patterns that we talked about. It just looks confusing, but it's not. What's the what? The bottom? Is that what you're asking about? So that to get um, the number here, you always put the power over zero. Then you put the power over one. Then you put the power over two, like the choose thing. So it's like the term number, basically? Kind of? The one that on the bottom is the term number? Except for, the, yeah. Remember there's one more term than there is power. So we're going to start at zero and go to n, because there's one more term than power. And it says, that seems like it. Okay, so to expand this using combinations, what you would do is we're going to figure out how many terms we have first. How many terms? We have four terms. And for each of those terms, the coefficient, you could get it out of Pascal's triangle, or you can use combinations. So each of these is going to start with a 3 on top. 
then I'm going to count from 0 all the way up to 3 for the bottom number. And then you can use your calculator to calculate each of those quickly. When you hit second enter, just change the bottom number every single time, which is the second number when it shows on your calculator. And then the other stuff we're doing the same way we did Pascal's triangle. So there was an x here. So we do an x to the third, x to the second, x to the first, no x's. And then there's a 1 in this spot, so we do no 1s, then we do 1 to the first, then we do 1 to the second, then we do 1 to the third. And we have all of our terms. So on your calculator, it should tell you 1, and we've already done these by hand also. And then it should tell you 3, and then it should tell you 3, and then it'll tell you 1. And so you've expanded it out much faster than using Pascal's triangle. So what, is, what do we do on the calculator? You're doing this thing on the calculator. You're doing 3C0 or 3C1 for each of those. That's just part you're doing the calculator. And then um, the variables, you're just descending the powers the way we did from the beginning class. And here's another example, but I'm going to pass it because of well, well, we'll write out what you type in the calculator, but I, I need to keep going. So since there's four, we would do four, and we would choose zero. Then we would do four, choose one, four, choose two, four, choose three. And we would be done when with the numbers matched, four, choose four. So you have five terms total. Those would be the coefficients. And you can get those by typing it in your calculator. And then the three X would be 3x to the 4. I'm, I don't really have a lot of space up here. 3x to the 3rd, 3x to the 2nd, 3x to the 1st, and no 3x's. And you do your negative 2. We have no negative 2, so we have negative 2. <laughs> <laughs> negative 2 squared, negative 2 to the third, negative 2 to the fourth, and you find all your answers. I have the answer somewhere. I don't have the answer right now. Can I go on? Because I'm not going to multiply this out. I just want to get to the last page. Okay. So the last page <clears throat> says, oh, the ACT, which some of you are taking this week. They may ask you a question, like find the seventh term of this binomial expression. There's no way I'm going to find all nine terms on my ACT if I only knew the seventh term. It's a time test. So you can actually jump straight to the seventh term and only find the seventh term. So we're going to do it using the combinations. So you look right here, it's a ninth power. So we're going to start with a 9, and then we're going to choose something. It is not 7, though. It is 6. And why? Because the first one starts at 0. So the first term starts at 0. Second term, third term, fourth term, fifth term. So if you look at this, the bottom number is always one less than the term. The bottom number is one less than the term. So this number is going to be a 6. It is 1 less than the term. Then we will do our 4x. And to get the power on the 4x, you just subtract the n minus the r from this combination. You just subtract n minus r, and you'll have the power on that um, how did you know the Because I'm telling you. Because I've already figured it out. If you go and you look at all the examples, that number will be the two numbers subtracted. Like if I go back and show you, it will be every time. And then we'll have negative y squared. And to get that exponent, or the one on this, on the purple one, you just use the bottom number. You just use r. You know what I'm talking about when I'm saying N and R? It's just from the 
That was just from the formula on the front page that said this is n and this is r, or n choose r. That was just the spot that they used. So this is the seventh term. I would type in, I, I, I can't do it without the light, so can you guys go to your calculator, type in 9 choose 6. It's a 9 choose 6. 84. And then we need to do 4x. This is 4x to the third. Well, I can do that by hand. 64x to the third. And we have to do negative y squared to the sixth. So if I take negative to the sixth, it becomes positive. Y squared to the sixth is y to the twelfth. And I need somebody to multiply for me. 84 times 64. 5, 3, 7, 6. Thank you. So very fast. It didn't seem very fast. It was plain of things. But if you were doing it very fast, you could get just the seventh term. Yes. Where did you get plus 3? You're going to take these two numbers and subtract them. And that's how you know what, what x point is there. Let's try another one. There's like two more to try. So find the fourth term of x minus 3 to the 8. So we're going to start with our combination. Our top um, va uh, value, the n value, would be the power. Eight. The bottom number is one less than which term you need to find. The bottom number should be what? Three. Then our x will go to the 8 minus 3 power. You subtract those numbers. And then our negative 3 is going to go to the third power, just the bottom number. So you're going to find 8, choose 3 on your calculator, and somebody's going to tell it to me to find, I can't see any of our steps. And then you'll have to multiply 56 times negative 27. Negative 1, 5, and 1, 2. You have your answer. Okay, you try the last one. I'm going to come around and uh, see that you can do it on, on your own, and we will be done. So um, while I'm coming around and checking, I'm going to put the um, homework up so whoever's watching the video can see it. But you guys need to do that last one on your own.